Hi everyone, my name is Josué Tonelli Cueto, and I will be talking about the Niyogi Smile Banger theorem and its relatives. So we have uh, a certain set X whose topology we want to get. So we sample points. We might even sample some more points. And here the question is how many points or when I do I get a good sample? Then the second thing we usually do is we fatten the points. Maybe we, uh, how much uh, should we fatten these points? So maybe we should sappen, fatten them a little bit more, uh, maybe even more. But of course, if we do it too much, uh, we lose any information that the sample might have about the set. So the formal question, we have a compact set X in our M. We have a finite set S in our M. This will be our sample of the set X. Then we have an epsilon bigger than zero. And then the question is, under which conditions do X and B S epsilon? So this is the union of the balls of radius epsilon around the points of my sample. So this is essentially the fattening of the points of my sample. So under which conditions do X and B S epsilon have the same topology? Formally by this, we mean that R of the same homotopy type. So here, a little bit of warning is, I will not enter on how you compute the topology of P S epsilon. This is usually done uh, through the check complex of S and epsilon. And there will be other tutorials where you will find more information about this object. So the Niyogi smile back Gerger theorem is exactly the answer to the formal question that we have about. So in this uh, theorem, we have two ingredients, the Hausdorff distance and the reads. The first one answers the question, how good is the sample? The second one answers the question, is the sample good enough? So first ingredient, Hausdorff distance. So let's consider this sample of points of this set X. So we ask, is this S a good sample of X? Here the answer is no. Why? Because there are some points of X that are too far from S. We consider another sample S of X and we ask the same question. Is this S a good sample of X? And again, the answer is no, but now because of the opposite reason, because some points of S are too far from the set X that I want to approximate. So now we consider this new sample and we ask the same question. Is this S a good sample of X? And maybe, because we can see that every point in X is near S. And at the same time, every point in S is near X. So this is more or less the idea of what a good sample should be. So having this in mind, uh, the Hausdorff distances introduced. So in this distance, we have the maximum of two quantities. The first one answers the question, how far are the points of A from B? The second one answers the question, how far are the points of B from A? So in this way, when the Hausdorff distance between A and B is small, we can guarantee that every point of A is near some point of B and that every point in B is near some point of A. So the theorem that uh, is important about the Hausdorff distance is that on the set of compact subsets of Rn, this is symmetric. And that this Hausdorff distance captures of intuitive notion of good sample. By this, I mean that if the this Hausdorff distance between my sample S and my set X is a small, then I can say that S is a good sample of X. So the second ingredient is the reads. So what can go wrong when we fatten, fatten the sample S of X? So we have a bottleneck, something can go wrong, of course, because if we fatten too much the points, I might lose this, this 
uh, this bottleneck. And if I have a high curvature, again, something can go wrong for the same reason. If I fatten too much, we might change the topology. So putting these two together, one can see this underlying formal object, which is the medial axis. So this is the set of points P for which there are two points in X. It's X and tilde X should start the distance of P to the set capital X is equal to the distance to X and to the distance to X tilde. In other words, and in a simpler way, this just means that my point P has more than one nearest point in X. In the bottleneck case, uh, this emerges because I, have, I am between the two branches that form a bottleneck. In the curvature case, this is formed because my point, uh, my point is pointing to two different uh, points in the curve zone. Uh, a medial axis uh, for a particular set X uh, might look uh, like this. And the quantity that we will be studying is called the reach. So this is the infimum distance of the points in X to the medial axis. So the reach is small if the medial axis is near the points of X and is big if the medial axis is far from the points of X. And this media and this reach is the one that will measure how hard it is to sample X. In this sense, if the reach of X is small, then we will be saying that X is hard to sample. So now we have introduced the two ingredients. So we are in conditions to state that the Yogi is male Weinberger theorem. So we have a compact set X that we want to get the topology of. We have a finite set S, which is our sample. We have a certain sickening of the points of our sample. And there are two conditions. The first one says is the house of distance between my sample and X is small enough compared to the reach. And then a second condition saying the fattening of the points is not too small, is not too big. Then under these two conditions, I can guarantee that PS, Epsilon, the fattening of the points in the sample and X are of the same homotopy type. Of course, this form of the theorem is uh, hard to grasp. So let's pass to an easier to read version, although weaker version of the theorem. So in this one, we can see that the fattening of the balls of the points in the sample should be slightly bigger than the house door distance of the sample to the set, but is small, smaller than the reach. So under that condition, we will be able to guarantee that BS epsilon and X are of the same homotopy type. So at this moment, we might wonder if we can do more, if we can have different forms of this theorem. And of course, the answer is yes. So there is a version with the weak reads. Uh, the importance of this notion is that the weak reads is positive for a larger variety of sets than the reads. So it covers more cases for sampling. And then we have the case in which we consider fattenings of different radii. So I don't fatten all the points in S the same way. Then I have one in which I use the Vietoris ribs complex, which is easier to handle computationally than the check complex that I will handle with the union of balls. And then I have another version in which I use ellipsoids instead of balls. And of course, there are other possible variations in the literature in which I will uh, not enter. So thank you very much uh, for listening to this tutorial. And I hope uh, that you got uh, an understanding of the Nijogi's male uh, Weinberger theorem.